seeing this thing online or on television. And it should that's have been um, now been... America's next RuPaul instead of Drag Race. RuPaul Drag Race. Right, basically. basically and you know that I actually. It's I, not I shade, Ru. Huh? No, I was talking to RuPaul. It's no shade, you know, but yeah, yeah. It's just my opinion. Oh, well, I needed a shade. <laughs> Period. <laughs> That show is downright uh, horrible because of it, it really takes drag to the lowest common denominator. It has nothing to do with performance and all this. Anyone can put on a pretty face and anyone can learn how to paint a, a, a great mug. But where's the talent? And then when they do have someone talented on the show, you don't get to see it. Oh it's all about it's all, it's all about room or it's all about the drama that... You know, this queen said this is about them behind their back or whatever. So we don't need that on television, and nobody cares about that. <laughs> I could see that in any dressing room in America, period. Okay. I don't need to see that on TV. Wow. <laughs> so now, now we have a whole generation of queens coming up who think that that's what drag is. Mm. That's not drag. Do you feel that drag affects the trans community? I'm sorry? Do you feel that this affects the trans community? Uh, oh, well, I, I'm, uh, well, in a way, yes, and in a way, no. I mean, like, RuPaul's show has definitely been kind of transphobic, I think, in my opinion. Uh, if they suspect or they know that you are going going in that direction, you get featured, but you're not a winner. They're looking for a boy in a dress. So how many transsexuals have you seen win the competition? Wow. Well, I, I'm sorry. The, the truth is the truth all but day you know, long, darling. You know, not everybody <laughs> understands, you know, the whole trans law that we have in our community. So, you know, they see RuPaul's Drag Race. They're going to officially assume that, you know, one of our trans women that is walking around in society right up the block from you, you know, it's okay to to relate the two together. And that is so not the case. Right. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not a transsexual, but I know quite a few of them. And the ones who truly, truly feel like they want to live and be women, um, they really don't have very much to do with the drag world. I mean, I know that there are plenty of transsexuals who are still doing drag in bars. And, you know, I, I feel a half a dozen one way and a half a dozen another about that because of if we're doing real drag and it's about the performance and about creating an illusion, then that's a drag queen. If we're getting augmentation and we're getting tits and we're getting, you know, we're living as women or whatever, that's not drag anymore. Not in my opinion. But, you know, and I'm sure some girls out there are going to be like, oh, now why did I bitch you had to say that? But it's, to me, that's the truth. Uh, the, the transsexuals that I know who really want to be women, they've disassociated themselves with drag shows. I, I know uh, a few, and I'm not saying any names with here, just in case that they're living their lives and they don't want to be outed or whatever, but they went on and got jobs as women and went on. Some are strippers now. Some of them are runway models. Some of them are, you know, these are, they went and lived their dream of being women instead of being the drag queen in the show. So, I mean, no, no offense to anyone, and if that's what you want to do, that's great. But, like, it's kind of, you blur the lines. You don't want, I know so many transsexuals who have something to say about, oh, I'm not a drag queen, and blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, then why are you doing a drag show? I don't get it. Okay. So. <laughs> so, but, you know, hey, that, that's just my little two cents, and that and a subway token will get you where you need to go, darling. Right. <laughs> we were just trying to spark a light light Alright, so so let's continue where we left off Before we started talking about RuPaul's Drag Race Okay, oh, um, well uh, um, I forgot what the main point was But Drag Race, to me, uh, changed what drag is So, oh, my original point was that the, the the casting of my show, that's part of the things that are missing. So now drag shows, like up here in Toronto, everybody wants to book drag queens that seem and look like something off of Drag Race, which 
if that's what they're going for, that's not about talent. That's about makeup and attitude. That has nothing to do with did she lip sync very well? Did she, you know, what what acting abilities did she bring to the number? Like, I don't like when I do drag. I do numbers that I actually feel and know and want to do. I don't do numbers like a human jukebox. I, there are tons of girls out there who are, you know, they do whatever it is that's top on the charts to make a buck. And, and hallelujah, girl, go make your coins. But me, I'm a performer, so therefore it has to have something to do with me. And so when I kind of transitioned into singing live on stage as opposed to lip syncing, I mean, I still do lip sync numbers for the right kind of bookings because there's some places they don't, they're not featuring a live singer. You know, they want you to lip sync, okay. And, you know, that's, that's a different fee, uh, you know, than me performing live. Right. You know, because I'm a recording artist. I have records on iTunes. Uh, you know, you may not know what those songs are. Hopefully after this interview, you'll go and look me up. But uh, as I tell many people, Google me, darling. You'll find out everything right. you need to know. Yes. <laughs> tell them where they can even find your music, by the way, so that they can get into the beats. Oh, well, I mean, you know, most of the DJs know that they can go to, like, Beatport and all of that stuff. But for the average person, iTunes, darling, it's all there. I have a remix album of all of, like, my main hits. I have stuff I have stuff that I've done as DJ Relentless and as Jade Electra. Uh, so, you know, if you type in either, you'll find them. Uh, and you might be surprised, or hopefully pleasantly surprised, that it's not just all, you know, ballroom beats and stuff like that. I wow. sing. Wow. Uh, uh, last year I did a, a cover of Carl Bean's uh, I Was Born This Way with um, uh, I kind of did a mashup between that and uh, Respect Yourself by the Staple Singers and the idea behind it it was for Pride uh, and, uh, and also I just I kind of felt like we needed to be reminded of the original I Was Born This Way I mean you know none against Lady Gaga but girl <sighs> You still, <laughs> you bite more beats. <laughs> she bites more beats than anybody, honey. Her, she kills me. You know, and everybody's gagging over it like uh, what you call it. Grace Jones is giving out excerpts uh, from her book, and she talks about Lady Gaga and uh, some friends of mine up here are having coronaries because she said that um, she looked uh, vacant. Uh, you know, like there was no soul behind her eyes when she met her. And, you know, the, oh, my God, how could she say that about Lady Gaga and blah, blah, blah. She could say that because she has the experience. She's been there long before her. So she knows, and she's been in the spotlight long before Lady Gaga. So I would trust her opinion because she's been there, you know. And Lady Gaga, even though she popped the charts and was a big name over these past five or six years, uh, Grace Jones has been around since the early 70s, so I think she might know what she's talking about. Yes. So, you know, the, you know, people, that's the other thing is, is that the youth culture, I, you know, it's great to be young. I was young once, too, but I actually appreciate being the age that I am. I am 48 years old and very glad to still be here, darling, because yes. I know too many people who aren't. <laughs> Too, too many people who aren't because behind stupid shit, the drugs and, you know, not taking care of themselves. Uh, yes, I'm HIV positive, but I take care of myself. And, you know, I'm, I don't get in those situations where I'm going to put myself at risk or in danger or whatever. And kids today, you know, they, they live like the Internet, like, oh, so, oh, that'll pass or they got a pill for that or whatever. Well, the reality of the of that stuff is um, HIV meds and stuff like that. It's not all um, the ads that you see on the subway or the bus. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. And, you know, there are side effects and there's all kinds of things that you have to accommodate with those meds. So if you are HIV positive, I would definitely tell you you need to take care of yourself so you can still be here. Just running around and partying and having sex with 5 million people and all this. Uh, you, you run around and find out you got more than just AIDS. 
so don't try it. Oh, I came together. I was looking at my Facebook earlier, and I came across this one ad. It was like that, you know, those little apps that everyone's on. You know, the what is it called? The tutored, uh, what is it? Uh, radars and all this crazy n- nonsense. Whatever that they are, you know, actually like uh, digital uh, bathhouse apps. And I was like, spooked. <laughs> they oh, I know, I know. And I, 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 I cringe when I look at, you know, every, every group on Facebook or whatever. You know, if it's a place where you can advertise like uh, club nights or events or whatever. And these kids who are posting these parties for, like, you know, these sex parties, and, you know, and they ain't mention one word about condoms, they ain't mention one word about, like, you know, uh, anything of importance. It's just come and get your freak. And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> this is the problem. This is the problem. This is why the kids are uh, turning up with all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, and with all these extras, more than HIV, because... You know, people aren't having these conversations. And, uh, you know, I wrote a song uh, uh, a few years ago, about like three or four years ago now, called H.I. Vogue. Uh, and basically it's about online, like uh, what people say online wow. as opposed to what it really is. Amazing. Uh, because, you know, the, the people just, you know, they don't want to talk about these things, but they should. You know, a simple conversation could save your life. But if you're not willing to have that conversation, then I guess you're willing to die. It's just that simple. Wow. You just said it right there. Powerful. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about, you know, when you first started DJing. How did you get into DJing? Uh, well, like I said, uh, I started with my uncle on radio, but then after that trip to Chicago um, and trying to learn how to mix, um, my first job in a bar, and I was underage, <laughs> uh, I got the job because... Stay surprising me. I, uh, what, what happened? You stay surprised with the little Kiki. He was like, <laughs> after you said... <laughs> well, I mean, when I was 16, I had an ID that said I was 22, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, which was I got my, I got club, my from darling. 22nd Street. How about you? <laughs> oh, no. Well, this is back in Tampa, Florida. I actually uh, no, I... I was a brazen bitch back then. I know that's so, right. Um, <laughs> Spill the tea. I, I we need to know. Brazen. We need to know the legendary Florida history. Spell it. Yeah. <laughs> I was really brazen. I slept with some uh, this child. I'll never forget his name was. Oh well, no, I better not say his name. Ooh. But anyway, I, <laughs> <laughs> I slept with this child, and then afterwards, uh, you know, uh, I turned to her so lovely. I was like, uh, I want your ID. I need your birth certificate because I'm going to get an ID. And he gave it to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I pumped right on up in this DMV and got me a state ID. Nice. And, and like it was nothing. Wow. <laughs> and and went out to the bar. And the, and the person who did the final paperwork on it was at the bar that night when I went. Bitch, I am gag. <laughs> Gagging. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, That's how yeah. easy it was back yeah. in the days? Huh? It was like that? That easy? It was that easy. Because, well, I mean, this is long before 9-11 and all that other bullshit. So, oh, you know, right. you just you just went, you know, as long as you showed up with the proper paperwork or whatever and you act like you knew. <laughs> You know, because uh, cause a bitch ain't never been scared, honey. I will walk right. right up in whatever. All right. So you got you got your you got your um. Hold, you, hold on, hold on. Tell the bitch you to got get back. Whoop. You got your ID now, and then and then, mm-hmm. boom! What happened? Uh, so I started going out to the clubs, and she was giving me much fashions back then because it was very androgynous. I was pulling Ooh. very um um. Molly Ringwall from uh, Breakfast Club, yes. big glossy shirts and and pearls and brooches and all kinds of things. Girls from t and three pins. Oh yes, yeah, so, like I was living uh, at the club, <laughs> Ch- changing her hair color every other week and all kinds of blonde streaks and oh, Charlotte was a mess. <laughs> 
know, it was a mess. <laughs> but, uh, I, but, you know, I lived. It was the 80s. It was fun. It was actually, you know, you know disco. Disco was in, and, and it was just coming out. You know, it was in back in the 70s, and, you know, a lot of people still, you know, respect and still celebrate the disco music. You know, it, it was a big part of the music era. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so, you know, I was going out to the clubs, and... I would make uh, I would make well they didn't have CDs back then so it was cassettes so I would make cassettes and you know I'd sell them out to a couple of friends or whatever.